Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Sparks Toyota, and I'm checking out a 2019 Toyota 4Runner 4-Wheel Drive in the Limited trim level. This 4Runner is sitting on 245 60 Bridgestone tires, wrapped around 20-inch alloy wheels with a gloss black. It also has four-wheel ventilated disc brakes. The name of this color is Classic Silver Metallic. And the sun is shining now, so hopefully you can get an idea of what the color looks, looks like. A portion of the front grille is body colored. The rest is chrome and a flat black. Even the bumper there at the bottom is body color colored. Now the limited trim level has a completely different styling here on the front end compared to the other trims. It has parking sensors across the front. You see that little sensor there. The headlights also have black bezels. And they're powered by halogen bulbs for your low and your high beams. Now the low beam is in a projector tube, the high beam is in a reflector, and the fog lights are in a reflectors uh, powered by halogens as well. So taking a look at the profile, the handles doesn't really pop out so much on silver, but the handles are a chrome. It also has a chrome uh, accent here at the very bottom, this trim. The upper portion of the side mirror is body colored. It does have an LED turn signal indicator here on the side mirror as well. Now from the factory, the rear glass is tinted, but the dealer went ahead and tinted the front glass to match it. You also have fender flares that are all body colored. And the wheels really look nice on this particular vehicle, in my opinion. This is what the key looks like, and you notice it's a silver color. And it's a proximity key designed to where you can keep it in your pocket 100% and use the vehicle. And it has a lock and unlock button, panic button, also a physical key on the inside in case you need it. But generally you just keep this in your pocket or your bag or whatever and you can use the vehicle. Let's go ahead and push this panic button and see what happens. Man, that is a loud horn. So it flashes the lights and beeps the horn. As long as you have the key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, in your hand, whatever, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of this door, you can lock the door by placing your finger over this little sensor indicated, indicated by these two lines here, and it'll lock the doors. There's also some down here as well, same deal. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. As long as the key's on the outside of the door, It'll sense your hand position, sense the key position, and allow you access. You also have a physical key location here on the driver's side only. Interior of this vehicle is mostly black, but it does have some accents. So you have a metallic accent here, chrome handle, stitching, contrast stitching here and here. Soft touch surfaces around your arm from here down, here, here, but then when you get down here, or even here in the front, it's a hard touch surface. There's a more forward uh, pocket, little storage pocket right in here, which is nice. And then you have bigger pockets there at the very bottom. And your controls for your door are in this high spot, really easy to get to, easy to see, and they don't get on the, get in the way down here. It also allows you access um, to, to have this little storage space. Passenger side has a power seat. You can go forward and back and tilt the back. Leather trim seats with the contrast stitching here as well. These are heated and vented seats. You can see the little perforations there in the center portion. And then on the edge is a smooth uh, leather. Check out the leg room floor mat hooks in place keeping it from sliding around and wide open leg room here so the dash has this simulated wood grain kind of like a cherry wood the dash is a non-reflective hard surface there lockable glove compartment 
and you can see it's quite big and it has a flat bottom so they can stack stuff in there. Also the little door in the very back, that's for your cabin filter. So you have a handle to help you get in or out the vehicle. There's your sunroof. We'll check that out in a little bit more detail later on. The inside of the back doors, very similar to the front. Uh, they have the controls up high, the storage pocket there and there, contrast stitching, soft touch surfaces in the same spots. A little bit smaller door though. So even with the front seats all the way back, you still have a tremendous amount of leg room, especially considering the seats are quite a ways off the floor. So it kind of gives you that chair feel. Net pockets on the back of both front seats, and it also is a, uh, a tough plastic there as well. Cup holders, the armrest, you can move that out of the way. It's basically a bench seat, but you can recline. You can see the seats over there recline. It's a 60-40 split, so you can fold them down or recline them separately. Very little hump here in the center portion. You have climate control vents back here, as well as 12-volt power supplies. And you have handles and hooks and a dome light here. Now folding these seats, this portion flips up like so. Then the headrest has to be tilted down like so. Then when you push this button, uh, it's going to kind of flip down. So you want to make sure you get a good hold of it. It's spring loaded and it kind of pushes it down to about that point because it's resting against this. You just slide it down until it's level. So looking at the back, uh, you can see it has body colored roof rails as well as a shark fin antenna right up there. Third brake light is in the center up here, powered by LEDs. You also have a hidden wiper under there as well, which is nice. This glass is powered. So you see it has these buttons here. Just press and hold that button and it'll go right on down for you. So that way you can access the cargo, press and hold it, and it goes back up. Backup camera is quite a bit offset here, not too bad. Then you have your towing package, hitch, and it also has parking sensors across the back as well, and a chrome accent. Tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs. Okay, so let's lift this up. Little button under here that releases it. It is manual. We'll have to lift, pull it up a little bit and it'll go the rest of the way by itself. It has two speakers and lights under here, so that way you can tailgate. Look at all that cargo space. Even with all the seats occupied with passengers, you still have a massive amount of room back here. Tie downs, storage pockets, place to put a shade back here as well. Has the, uh, the JBL subwoofer back here as well. Would recommend a cargo mat on top of this carpet if you're using this for um, anything dirty. Over here, spare tires underneath the vehicle. You probably saw that in the very beginning. Uh, but behind this is your tools and your jack for your spare tire. When you're tailgating, you have access to a 12 volt power supply, but also a power inverter, 400 watts, while the vehicle's running and idling. And then it's just like a regular outlet you'd find in your house, three prong and everything. So this is a 60-40 split. I mentioned that this seat is reclining right now. You can see the split right here. Well, you can fold this down, um, the armrest down as well. So you can see there's a latch right here, unlatches the center portion. You can fold that down separate from these two seats, or you can have a 60-40 split, or you can fold down all of it. So depending on your needs, you can maintain some passenger space while still ha adding to your cargo, or you can fold it all down and have a tremendous amount of cargo space. 
fuel door is here on the driver's side and it has a traditional cap tether and a place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door as long as you have the key inside the vehicle it could be in your pocket in a bag or just put it in the cup holder uh, to start it you just put your foot on the brake and hold it and push this button Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see the floor mat hooks in place, just like the passenger. There's your accelerator and brake pedals. Foot rest here on the left side. Pretty good size as well. Foot actuated parking brake. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a little latch here, almost to the center, but a little bit to the right. Just reach in, move it to the left, and lift up a little bit and it goes the rest of the way by itself. The under portion of the hood is insulated as well as a seal across the front. You also have seals across the back and sides. Some batteries here on the right side, it's easy to get to. Has a cover trying to cover the engine and hide it from, from us, but we can see it anyway. We see it here on the sides. A little bit of insulation there on the, on the firewall. So under the hood is a 4.0 liter dual overhead cam V6, pumping out 270 horsepower, 278 pound-feet of torque. Now it's a four-wheel drive vehicle, full-time four-wheel drive system with active track and a locking center di differential. It's paired to a five-speed automatic transmission, electronically controlled transmission, by the way. It has a uh, power steering, of course, with a rack and pinion type steering system. It also has a sport enhanced suspension and skid plates underneath. The inside of the driver's side door looks just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. All the power windows are full auto. So it's one touch up and down like so. You have door lock controls here and you have two presets for your power seat here for the driver. They always have something a little bit special. So in addition to the forward and back tilt and all that stuff, you can also go up and down and tilt the bottom portion of the seat like so. And then you have a, a two-way lumbar adjustment there, powered. And they're both heated and ventilated. I'll show you those controls here in a minute. To the left of the steering column, your side mirror adjustments are here. You just pick a side and adjust it with this little pad. Dimmer switch for your interior gauges is here. You can turn on or off the parking sensors and has a little light indicating that it's turned on or off. So down here you have a, uh, this vehicle actually has a, uh, a power inverter which you can turn on or off. And then there's a heater uh, underneath the windshield wipers to break them free in the winter time if they're frozen shut. There's a heater just below those. You can turn that on or off here. And that has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place right here. Release it, lock it. Okay, so here we are on the inside checking it out, sitting in the driver's seat. That wood really looks nice. It's basically just in that one spot, that wood. Everything else is either black or metallic look or leather. And speaking of leather, you have a leather wrapped steering wheel. And you see the sides of it are perforated and the upper and lower portions have the traditional leather texturing. And then the center portion matches that leather texturing but it's a synthetic material and it's soft to the touch and pretty good thickness really comfortable high quality feeling steering wheel so the cruise control is hidden back here so you push this button to turn it on pull it down to set it up to resume and pull it in to cancel Bluetooth controls are here to answer, hang up. You also have a voice recognition. Volume for your radio is here. 
So this right here is your uh, mode for your audio source. Depending on what screen you're in, this actually controls your radio. So you can change through your tracks on your radio or stations. Um, and also you can change through your audio source here as well, uh, which will go into the radio in just a few minutes. This display button corresponds with the screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a second. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side and turn signals here on the left side. This is where you also, you also find your headlight controls. So you can turn off your daytime running lights, have an automatic parking and then headlights here and your fog lights are controlled here. Okay, so here's the gauges. Uh, very easy to read. It has a nice little blue accent there, but mostly it is white on black. Good contrast to be able to focus on with your eyes transitioning off the road and into your gauges. So your RPMs there, there on the left, and up here is your engine coolant temperature, fuel gauge, and then your, your speedometers there on the right side. You also have a digital speedometer here in the center. Uh, outside temperature, digital clump compass, and your odometers here at the very bottom of that screen. So pushing the, this display button uh, cycles through and you get a little bit more information there in that display. So you're pushing it. Uh, this is kind of like a screen that shows you your vehicle. So when I open up the door, it's going to show the appropriate door that's open. Close it. So that's pretty handy if you're trying to figure out which door is open or whatever. And then you can go into settings here blank screen, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, uh, your range, elapsed time, so you just like a timer, and your goes back to your digital speedometer, which would be my default screen. This right here is for your, uh, this button right here is for resetting your trip. So you have trip A, trip B, and you just press and hold it to reset it. So that's pretty traditional has a digital clock that's separate from the touchscreen. Um, so this is, your eyes can find it easier. It's easy to set with the minute and hour buttons there. And um, so you, you don't have to look at the screen at all to just glance and see what time it is. Also very, not very far from your road. So you're looking at the road, you glance here, you, have to, you can look back so you can keep it on the time without getting too distracted with anything uh, down here. So it has a traditional volume, tuned through the stations. Now the volume knob is really big and it's rubberized on the outside and it's backlit illuminated around the outside, which is pretty cool. It has a CD player here at the top, another phone button, just like the one on your steering wheel. Then you have some physical button buttons around the touch screen. So a little bit of this is redundant, so that way you can go directly into your audio. You don't have to go into your apps and then push the audio. So looking at the audio screen, you have your presets there on the left side, shows you what station you're in. Uh, you can change your audio source here, AM, FM, satellite radio, CD player, USB, Bluetooth, and auxiliary inputs. Your home button is a split between uh, your radio, phone, and your navigation map. So we can just touch the navigation map if you wanna go in there. And we can put in a destination here uh, by address. We can also have a home address and um, frequently visited place here just like favorites or whatever you also can seek through your tracks there under here is a micro usb uh, drive for updating your maps four a flashers are right here by the way okay so climate control so down here is driver and passenger uh, temperatures and they're nice big knobs now you can push that button to engage the dual uh, otherwise if you don't have that on then they're not they're going to be the, the same so if this is turned off and I adjust this they're both going to be the same you can see the temperatures they're changing together if we push this or we just start adjusting that knob uh, then they'll be separate so your fan speed where you want the air to blow front and rear defrosters and air conditioner recirculate the air buttons it's really easy and large icons and large buttons easy to, to follow here also when you turn on the rear defroster it also turns on your heated side mirrors as well so this is where you'll find your USB and auxiliary inputs 12 volt power supply and your heated and ventilated seats controls 
So these buttons kind of go out of the way, pull them out, and then you can adjust it. To the left is your cooled seat, and to the right is your going to the right, and to the red will be your heated seat. Same thing for the passenger side. Your little storage pocket down in here. It's a cup holder. So your four-wheel drive options is really easy to change. It's just a knob here. So full-time four-wheel drive, that's your high four-wheel drive. This is a high four-wheel drive, four -wheel drive but it's, it locks. You're locking uh, differential there. And then you have four-wheel drive low. So that's your slow, heavy-duty four-wheel drive. Off-road. These are off-road use only here. So your center differential will be able to spin and, uh, you know, separate any changes in the road when you have it on full-time high. Uh, but when you put on the lock, that's when you have to have, you have to be off-road for this kind of stuff because it will cause problems with your transmission if you're driving on dry pavement uh, on these two particular settings. So there's a little pocket right here, put pins or whatever you want. In my case, I just threw the key there. So there's a cup holder and extends out into this area. So that way you can utilize that space for more than just cups. You could prop your cell phone up or whatever you want in that spot. Now there's some more wood. So there is another spot where there's wood. It's that same matching wood that's on the dash is here on the shifter. And then it has the leather on the outside. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can check out the backup camera. It has static guidelines there. That's a wide, super wide angle. There's neutral, drive, and then you can change through the gears by bumping it up and down um, in case you need to downshift. And you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show here. Okay, so this is for your power window in the back, your back window. And here's your armrest. Soft to the touch. Kind of like a rubbery type soft, not cushy type soft. It's pretty wide too, so you might be able to share with your passenger. And then this lifts up. Place to put some tissues or pins or whatever here. Then you have a large storage pocket, 12 volt power supply and a smaller uh, storage pocket here in the front. And this divider, you can move that out of the way, take it out if you need to. Place to put some coins or something here. And a place for wires to go in and out of this compartment there. So the rear view mirror is an automatic uh, day and night mode. So it's actually auto dimming right now because they have the shade over the light sensor back here. It's right back here. And you can turn that feature on or off right there. Place to put your shades and it has a soft material, kind of like a, a real thin felt, I guess you can say. So this will give you roadside assistance. So this is a, like a downhill descent type control here. So if you're going down slippery, it's gonna keep you at a set speed and keep you from sliding too fast. And then there's your active track button. This will keep you moving forward if you're spinning tires and everything on an extreme off-road condition. It's gonna keep you going. You see videos and stuff of people taking these vehicles through sand and stuff. It's just really impressive. And then your traction control, you can turn that off in case you need to spin tires. Home link garage door opener controls are here. You can have your uh, interior lights turn on with the door or not by choosing that. There's a little ambient light right in here, which is real nice at nighttime. And then you have tap lights here. So this is for your um, your sunroof, which we'll get to that in just a second. The visor has a light and a mirror in it. It also has an extender here on the side. Look how long that is, that's cool. Same thing on the passenger side. I like the extender a little bit better than sliding the, 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 the whole visor because this actually adds to your coverage instead of just shifting the coverage over. 
Okay, so here is the sunroof. Let's check that out. So it has a shade that covers 100% of the light, which is nice. Sometimes you just don't want any light coming in. Um, so let's go ahead and open that up. We can vent it. Or we can open it. Push it again, it goes a little bit further back. Not, not sure why they do that. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So you can see there's pillars back there and you got this headrest uh, that gets in the way a little bit. But other than that, it's just wide open back there. Lots of glass to see out of and um, you know, over your shoulder or in the mirror, or whatever, it looks pretty good. Uh, in addition to the backup camera as well to help you out and the parking sensors. All right, so there you have it. This is the limited forerunner really nice vehicle off-road capable hold their value really good as well so thank you for watching thank you to sparks toyota here in myrtle beach south carolina for allowing me to show off another vehicle and i'll see you guys next time